Congratulations, you've completed an inspection. And based on your observations and our training, it appears that a claim is warranted at this time. How do you explain this to the homeowner and help them to begin the claims process? The following role play is an example of what that conversation might look like. Okay, Andrew, um, so I was on your roof and boy, howdy. Uh, yeah, okay, so I've got good news and I've got bad news. Oh, yeah, I know. Give me first. I'll give you both. All right. I'll do that for you. Here's the good news. Good news is your roof is really, really blown up by the wind. Right, that's I know. Good news. You're like, how's that good news? Yeah, yeah, this is why that's good news. Because I think I'm fairly confident I can make your insurance company buy you a whole new roof. Yeah. That's pretty good news. Yeah. Don't you think? That's exciting. I thought so. Now, the bad news is that can take, oh gosh, six to eight weeks, depending on your insurance company. Some are faster, some are slower. We're going to go ahead and go through that process. Um, we'll be there every step of the way doing the work on your behalf. So the next steps work like this. We're actually going to make a phone call to your insurance company. We're going to file a claim. When we file that claim, we're going to let them know what's up there, how much is damaged. Uh, they're going to ask a series of questions. I'll answer most of the questions. They'll want to know who you are and that it's your house. But other than that, I'll take most of, the, most of that uh, conversation on. They're going to give us a claim number. We're going to write that down. They're going to give us probably an adjuster. We'll write that down, although that's probably subject to change in the future. Then they'll let you know when, the, when to expect a call back from them and so forth. That's fairly straightforward. It'll take us about 10 minutes and we'll do it on speakerphone so you'll know every step of what's happening. Cool. Sounds easy. It is pretty easy and I try to make it painless. The next thing we're going to do is fill out the contingency agreement. And that's what I told you before. The contingency agreement uh, basically says that, yeah, if I'm right, you're going to a new roof and you're only going to pay your deductible. But if I'm wrong, you're not going to be obligated to us. You don't owe me anything for the time trying to get it done. And then the third and, and to my mind, at least as important step is that I'm going to do all the heavy lifting for you. You're giving your insurance company permission to work with me so you don't have to be bothered every time I need to talk to them. I'll do the insurance right. work. Easy enough. Right? Uh, so that's where we're at. If you want to go grab your uh, policy number, we'll go ahead and make that phone call and we'll get this process started. All right? All right. See if I can find it. Cool. Great. Your homeowner agrees. It is time to file a claim. Now what? The following is one possible example of what that might look like. Okay, so when we get them on the phone, they're just going to ask you for your name. They're going to ask you for your address and pretty much everything else they're going to ask me for. So let's get started with that call. <laughs> Good afternoon. This is Luke with Luke's Insurance. How can I help you? Hey, Luke. This is Michael with Bartlett Roofing working out of Boise, Idaho. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well, Michael. What can I do for you today? Hey, I'm here. I've got you on speakerphone with one of your customers, Andrew. Say hi to Andrew. Oh, uh, hi, Andrew. How are you? Good. How about yourself? Uh, yeah, I, I'm doing. I'm doing well. What can I do for you today, Andrew? All right. So here's what's going on, Luke. Andrew has uh, fairly significant wind damage up on his roof, and he's asked me to help him file a claim with you. So that's what we're up to. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear about that. Uh, am I on speakerphone? You are on speakerphone. Awesome. Okay. Well, Andrew, I'm I'm very sorry that that's happened to you. Um, give me just a few minutes so I can get a get your policy. Do you have your policy number on hand? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. If you could just give that to me, I'd love to look you up in our system. All right. It's L M H nine two five six seven H J K. Awesome. Okay. Yep. It looks like I found you here in our system. So uh, what seems to be going on? Well, when I went up there and looked around, he's got uh, a bunch of, of, of damage on the roof. We've got shingles blown off. We've got pull-throughs on every slope. It's it's pretty global damage and it's fairly extensive. Okay. Just let me notate that here in my file. <clears throat> Absolutely. Do what you got to do. Okay, and uh, what date did that storm happen on? So the storm date that we're working with was the one that happened in June, June 21st. Okay, and do you know approximately what time that storm happened? You know, it was an evening storm uh, sometime between 6 and 6.30 as I recall. Okay. All right, yeah, okay, so I have that in there. Um, so. 
You said there was damage to the roof. Are, is there any exterior structures that are damaged? There are no other structures. Okay, awesome. Give me just a few more minutes mm -hmm. here. I'm going through and just getting your claim information all uh, set up and ready to go. Okay. Um, do be advised, uh, it is our recommendation that you go ahead and mitigate the property from any further damage. Mm -hmm. So um, that means that if you need to do any repairs, please keep those receipts so that we can go ahead and uh, get you reimbursed for those. Um, is there any sort of uh, leaking that has occurred from this? None that we're aware of this time. Okay. Um, and just one more question for you. Um, was there any personal property damaged in the storm? None that we're aware of. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, Andrew, is he still here? Yes. Okay, Andrew, it looks like I have a claim number for you. Do you have something to write this down? Hang on one second. Let's get that here. And go ahead. Okay. So the claim number is going to be 37 dash B like in Bravo, H like in Henry, 86705. Got it. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate your call in today. Uh, somebody will reach out to you within the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, and uh, we'll, we'll help you get this taken care of, Andrew. Uh, thanks for calling Luke's Insurance. Fantastic. Thanks, Luke. We appreciate all your help. You have a great night. You as well. Bye-bye. Luke's Insurance is not a real insurance company, ladies and gentlemen, but this is this is and probably will be a very similar representation to what you're going to experience in the field. As someone who has filed many claims and been on the other end of filing those claims with an insurance company, that's something that I've done about a thousand times. So although this isn't a real insurance company, and this is something that we're just doing as, as a mock-up for your training, that is a very real representation of how that conversation will go. Excellent, the claim is filed and you have a claim number. Now remember, we cannot help the homeowner without a signed agreement. But how do you explain that to our customer? Well, don't overthink it. Remember, our agreement is contingent upon the insurance company agreeing with us that this is in fact storm damage. If they don't agree, our homeowner's not obligated to us. So this is the contingency agreement that I was telling you about. It's fairly straightforward, although it is somewhat lengthy. We'll go through it, don't worry. Here's the important parts. The, the, uh, the beginning is just who you are, what the claim number is, who our insurance company is, what the policy number is, gives your address. Does that look like your information there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Right. All right. Then it talks about, again, your insurance company, what happened, when it happened, and then my information so that on paper, you know exactly how to reach me. Okay. So a couple of things to note. Right here it says, and this is really, really important. This job is part of an insurance claim. It is being paid for by the insurance proceeds and the customer's deductible only. That's well, important. Yeah, like that. <laughs> right. The total amount of the project will be the full amount of the insurance proceeds. And then just to be clear, it is illegal for a policyholder to profit from a claim. We're not into insurance fraud. So we're gonna take the full amount of the insurance proceeds, including any supplemental amounts negotiated on your behalf for the settlement of this claim. Uh, it's all gonna be paid to you, and then you're gonna pay us that plus your deductible. And that's what this says here. Does that make sense? Okay. Honestly, I'm a little confused. So to restate it, what we're saying is this. Huh. We're going to tell the insurance company the total cost of this project. They're going to pay the entire cost less your deductible. They're going to send all that money to you, and then we're going to come collect all of that money from you, plus your deductible. Okay. That's how much money we're collecting. We're not going to come back to you for more money beyond this. Got you. you pay your deductible and what they pay you to us. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah. The, you aren't keeping any of the insurance money is what I'm driving. Oh, I got at. you. Okay. I was wondering about the insurance fraud. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You're not keeping gotcha. any of the insurance money. It is all going 
into your roof. Cool. That's the important part. Okay, right. so I need you initial right there. Just tap it. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, there we go. All uh -huh. right. There you go. Okay, cool. Now, terms and conditions. This is important. This project, and I'm just read this verbatim. This project is part of an insurance claim. The agreement only obligates the customer to the extent that is approved by the insurance claim. What that means is, I'm not gonna get the insurance company to say, oh yeah, we'll replace the roof and then do a whole bunch of work that isn't related to that and bill you for it. Gotcha. I am only okay. doing what they're paying for. Good. Does yep. that make sense? Yep. Okay. Now the rest of these terms and conditions, you need to understand this is, this is a construction site, so stuff can happen. Things are gonna fall off the roof. We might wind up with some nails left in your shrubbery. We're gonna do our level best to clean up after ourselves, but stuff happens. I need you to keep your pets inside. I need you to keep small children inside. And anything that you have outside that's very important, I need you to either take it into the garage or move it all the way against the fence so it's as far away from the roof line as possible because I don't want any of your other personal property damage. Does that make sense? Yep. Makes sense. Also, and this is an important piece for you to understand, if something does wind up getting broken by us, we're going to do everything in our power to make that right. But you have to tell us and you have to give us the time to make it right. Fair? Fair enough. Okay. I'm going to scroll down a little further. And this is an important clause right here. See this? If this work is being substantially paid for by the insurance proceeds, which it is, right. this contract is void if the insurance company denies coverage. If they decline to pay for this, this contract is void. We're done. Okay. That's the whole you don't have anything right. to risk if yeah. I fail. I like that. Okay. Now I'm going to need you to tap and sign there. Excellent. Okay. And now this is the last part. And this is an important piece. This is the three day notice of cancellation. It's the law. It's the cool down period. The 72 hour cool down is what they call it. Everybody gets to see this. It's nationwide. I came to your door and as such, you have the next 72 hours. And if for any reason you decide, gosh, I changed my mind. All you have to do is fill this out, sign it right there and bring it to the office. And this goes away. There's no obligation. There's no hard feelings. Okay. Now, let me explain something to you. I've never had a customer in all the time I've been doing this use this form. Do you know why? No. Well, because this clause up here that says if they won't pay for it, you're not on the hook for anything means that they may as well let me continue because they risk nothing. If you gotcha. don't go ahead and initial that I told you about it. All right. Fantastic. That, sir, is it. We are done and ready to roll. Good stuff. That's it. You have successfully completed the most important step in this process. Now it's time to explain the next steps to your homeowner. It's very important that they understand what to expect going forward on this process. And also, what their one job is. Okay, Andrew, so we've done the claim is all filed. The contingency agreement is, is signed. We're ready to rock and roll. But there's one more thing I need you to do. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? This is your one job. All right, give it to me. Super important. Your insurance company is gonna call you. They're gonna to wanna to talk to you. Some of the things your insurance company are gonna to wanna to talk to you about are fairly straightforward. They're gonna to wanna to explain the coverage to you. They're gonna to wanna to explain to you their legal obligation to you. Yep. They're gonna to wanna to explain the limits of their, of their uh, protection for yep. your house. This is all reasonable stuff, and quite frankly, it's stuff only you can talk to them about. It is, after all, your policy. Mm -hmm. Then they're gonna to wanna to talk to you about damage on the roof. And they're gonna to wanna to talk to you about the process of getting damage repaired. Let me ask you a question. Are you a roofer? Nope. That's yeah. why you called me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So as soon as your insurance company starts talking to you about the roof and starts asking you questions about the damage on the roof or when you notice damage on the roof or anything about the roof, this is what I need you to say. Are you ready for this? I need you to say to them, listen, man, I'm not a roofer. I'm going to need you to call Michael and give them my phone number because you're not a roofer. And while they're not trying to get you in trouble, you only want to answer questions that you actually can answer and you cannot, you're not qualified. I know how to talk to them and I'll make sure that we give them the information they need to make the best possible decision. All Does right. that make sense? Yeah, fair enough. I don't like talking to them anyways. Well, then I'll do that for there you. you. Go. Now, one more thing they're going to try to do. They're going to try to get on your roof. They have the right to inspect the roof, but they cannot tell you the terms under which that happens. 
you have the right to say when, and you have the right to demand that I be present. And I need you to exercise that right. So when they ask, hey, when's a good time to get out on the roof? This is what I need you to say. You know what? I know you need to get on my roof, but I'm gonna need you to schedule that with Michael. All right. Is that fair? Yep. Awesome. Then we're good to go. Andrew, thank you so much for letting us work on this for you. I'm looking forward to getting this done. All right, thank you. There you have it. That is the final steps. Now you're gonna go out to your car and you're gonna complete your paperwork and we'll describe that shortly. Keep in mind that when you're working with people, generally speaking, folks will do what you ask them to do if you can give them a compelling reason to do it. And they will almost always feel compelled to act the way you ask them to act if you feel like what you're doing is in their best interest. And truly, this is in their best interest. If you've made the determination that this customer deserves our advocacy on their roof, then they have nothing to lose. Either they're getting a new roof for the low, low price of their deductible, or you were wrong and the insurance company isn't going to pay for this. And they're no worse off than they were when we first knocked on their door. Keep that in mind as you move forward. What we do actually helps people. What you do matters.